Pickett is right up there as well in third, and Richard Pickett's hit problem. So, Richard Pickett, who was scoring well, who was up on 11 points from two rides, all down on the top of the third, and that's his answer for him. He's going to be able to do it all of his last riders. It's a great scrap developing at the front, though, between Paul Miller and Mel Goodwin. Now, Paul changes line, cuts back inside, looks for the way through on the inside, but a good, intelligent ride from Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall as they've Close the gap to Paul Miller, just follow them around that top bend. It's going into this bottom bend that Paul Miller tends to get the advantage. You can see him very quickly gain as they go into that bottom bend. Around the outside he goes once again. Is he quicker this time? He's gone wide again. Mel stays on the inside of him. Paul Miller trying to cut across, but Mel Goodwin again has found the line through on the inside. So definitely Mel Goodwin and Gary Rockall better on this top end of the circuit and Paul Miller better at the bottom end of the circuit. Now, the interesting thing is, of course, they'll come to the chicken flag in front of us here. And it's this bottom bend. Paul Miller again goes to that outside line. So determined to try and get round. He keeps the power on. This time he's got a better line as he is. He comes to the line. Paul Miller takes it. Terrific race between those two. Mel Goodwin has to be content with second. I've lost track of the fact that Mike Reed was up there in third place. Followed home by Norman Haynes, but a great scrap between those two. Fastest race of the afternoon. Ah, uh, we look at that. Clayton Williams it is. Clayton who's been gaining well all afternoon. Clayton Williams has been in the field with a couple of minutes. Kevin Banks, I think, in that second spot. So Clayton Williams out in front. Kevin Banks in second. Steve Scalford in third. Kyle Earl in fourth. Peter Lloyd in fifth. And Steve Schofield's got a little bit of work to do if he's going to win the Whopper in 1995. He comes up close behind Trevor Banks. Remember all those good races between these two over the years. But it's Clayton Williams who's made the best of the start. Clayton Williams had his front well. It's really good for Clayton coming back from injury if he can take this one. Clayton Williams leads. Trevor Banks in second. Steve Schofield in third. And Peter Lloyd and Colin Earl side by side battling for that fourth spot. So it's Clayton still with the advantage. Trevor Banks seems to close up a little bit then. It's, they've gone closer together. Let's see them close up on the bend. Will Trevor Banks have a go and overtake his place? Will Trevor Banks have a go and overtake his place? Will Trevor Banks have a go and overtake his place? Will Trevor Banks have a go and overtake his place? Clayton needs to hang on in there. Is he fit enough after that injury? Clayton Williams in front. Trevor Banks in second. Steve Schofield in third. And one more bend to go. And Trevor Banks moves up. Banks closes up. Clayton Williams still with the advantage. It's Trevor Banks round the outside. It's Clayton Williams on the inside. Let's see who's going to get there. Clayton Williams on the inside. But he's going to lose it. It's Trevor Banks who's going to get there. Trevor Banks wins. Clayton Williams in second. Steve Schofield in third. Peter Lloyd in fourth. Colonel in fifth. In sixth place, Steve Baker. Steve Bishop, rather. Well, what a race. Trevor Banks and Clayton Williams at their best, surely. And a tremendous race between the two of them. Thank you. 
Pittman and Marsham is up in second place. Mark Edwards and Nick Walters holding third place at the moment. Rob and Chris Winderburn there in fourth spot. And as they turn in incredibly tight, they try to get a line down this finishing straight inside that of Mark Edwards and Nick Walters. But Roger Misa and Shane Lapham look to have a bit of a they got a little bit of the eye, they can't close the gap. But Roger Misa gets away. And I think I ought to remind you at this stage that this would be the third win in a row for Roger Misa and Shane Lapham. And they're going well at the moment as they go past us again, still with the advantage over Phil Pittman and Miles Simmons. Mark Edwards and Nick Walters still in that third place, not able to close that gap for Phil Pittman, now a chance to close on Roger Mita. They go off that back straight and the gap has definitely got shorter between those front two. Roger Mita trying to take things as eminently sensible as possible, trying not to make any mistakes, but Phil Pittman is definitely closer to him going into this last lap. Oh, problems for Rob and Chris Winterworm by the look of it, but is it just one more lap to go? Phil Pittman goes for the outside of Roger Mita going up that back straight. Oh, Roger Mita sees the danger, turns the power back on. He's got the lead back again as he goes into this pit bend for the last time. And as he turns it in hard, this is where Phil Pittman gets close. Again, he's going to go for the challenge, but Roger Mita has got the power on, and Roger Mita takes it. Roger Mita and Shane Lapham take the Wimble Whopper title for 1995. And that indeed completes a straight hat trick of wins 1993, 94, and now 1995. <laughs> Out, still playing with the uh, machine with his left hand as he goes back to the pits. Mike Smith unmoved up there. This is John's straight in on it with assistance. on going past Chris Tritton but can he do it? He sights him up as he comes down that straight. He's gaining a few yards. He goes down there into the turn. Locks it up sideways. Flat out now as he comes up alongside Chris Tritton. But can he get there? Chris Tritton holding on to second. Feeding on second place. Sets his sights off to the bank. To the bank. To the bank. He's leading from Zingador's second place. Last lap, it's Fellabank's leading. Fellabank's leading. goes through on the inside. Second. Gary Reynolds in third. Chris Tritton in fourth. Favourite should be 173 John Fish, but he's not off to the best of starts. He was away fourth, but he's up to third. It's Tony Van Bolt and Julian Wood that are leading. Tony Van Bolt and Julian Wood. Wood. From Martin Cup and Jason Ralph, and then 173 John Fish and Gary Moore on the comeback trial. Three rides and three wins in the heat. Can they sort this lot out in front of them? Number 24 is uh, Martin Jones. Making it hard work for John Fish to come at him. So the 1000 CCX up is leading from the 1000 V Twin Gotten and another 1000 V Twin Gotten and another 1000 Yamaha. And there's a trolley fish going around 
Then you have 909 to push Martin up to the stage. But it's not to be this time. But he's in very close contention. And he won't give up until the checkered flag comes out. Look how close they're getting on that corner. That John Fish really means trouble, but Martin Cup just won't stop it. And Jason Rowe. John Fish goes right on the outside and he's got him this time. He's taking him on the outside. Now he's just And he's going to have his work cut out to get past this boy. He's very fast. He's been very quick off the start all afternoon. Look at him when he's earlier. He's like inside line. Like and John Fish goes on the outside now. Tony Benfold. Tony Benfold is still leading. We've just half a lap remaining. It's Tony Benfold and Julian Wood. John Fish and Gary Moore. Then Martin Cup and Jason Rowe. And Julian Wood. And Julian Wood. And Julian Wood. And Julian Wood. And Julian John Fish and Gary Moore. Three little seconds. Then Martin Cup and Jason Rowe. Banks is not away clean this time, but he's in there in third place. It's Julian Phipps that gets to the first. Julian Phipps is going for it. Trevor Banks has come past on the inside. He's got it all wound up and he's going for it. Turn it out next turn they go, and it's 110. Stevie Doyle from 25. Trevor Banks, then Julian Phipps. Julian Phipps having a very good ride at the moment. Trevor Banks going right up the inside of Stevie Doyle and passes him. Goes into that turn. Stevie Doyle won't give up. He'll be fighting right on that checkered flag. Well, they come in. Well, Stevie Dore in second place. Trevor Banks now the old campaigner. Stevie Dore, the young pretender. Who's he going to be at the finish in this sixth lap final? Malcolm Simmons back there in third at the moment. And excellent. Just with the advantage at the moment. On the inside, Trevor Banks on the outside, they're locked in battle as Steve Dorr goes through. Steve Dorr takes up the running. Trevor Banks there in second place. Is Trevor satisfied with that second or is he going to make a fight there? They come around the outside. 25, Trevor Banks. He's off, but it's Stevie Dorr now. Trevor Banks seems to have let him have it. He's not fighting anymore. The last lap play goes. Just one lap to go. Just one lap to go. Banks pulling wheelies. In third place. Malcolm. Half a lap from the door of this race. Into this race. Stevie Dorr coming around there from that early stage. That's the checkered flag. Number one. Uh -huh. Second place, 25, Trevor Banks. Mm -hmm. After this, and the gun protector to away. It's number four that goes down the first turn first. And it's been overtaken by Rob Wilson Sr. on that first turn. Yeah. Rob Wilson Sr. now getting away. Jason Rogers is coming up on the inside though, and he goes through. On the ex-ruffling outfit, Dave Steer in problem, right to the back. A good half a lap behind the leaders. Round they come then, 24, Rob Wilson Sr. and Tony Miles on the outside. Number four, James Rogers, 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 24, Rob Wilson and Tony Miles still leading then. A bit of a battle coming on now for that second, third and fourth place. You get all three of them in the back of a van as they come round that corner. It's 24, Rob Wilson Sr. and Tony Miles leading. Four, James Rogers and Damien James in second. Third and third. In fourth place, Rob Wilson Sr. and Colin Hill. And then Bill Beecham and Dean North, followed by Dave Steer and Andy Orchard at the back of the field. 24 then, Rob Wilson Sr. and Tony Miles extending their lead. But 
James Rogers goes a little wide, Duncan Solos pushes through. Rob Wilson Jr. pushing hard behind him as well. Rob Wilson Sr. and Tony Miles well clear of the rest of the field. The red flag there from that there. Oh, it's looks like James Rogers has lost the pass to Duncan Solos. He has. I'm sure he's another 350 jack, there's 270, Brian Bassett. 11 Bill Barley, 171 Arthur Lilly, the next week is the BSA. Number 8, Selwyn Perry. Oh, and down goes one man already, that's brought his day to a sudden halt. Number 7, Jason Hall, the next week is the BSA. Number 4, Jason Hall, the But uh, that's why I'm in terrible trouble singing Who You Are. That guy's Adam. So, how do they come there? Race number 17 is Keith Strudwick that leads. Got problems. Two struggles going around the outside, and uh, Tony's out looking down again with problems. Keith Strudwick works around the outside. As I said, all in town uh, with uh, Tony Dart has gone to Colin Howe. And uh, looks like we have a red flag. The race team stopped with the interest station. There goes the tapes, off go the riders. Red flags are out. There are four riders on the floor, Terry Phillips and Chris Watt. Terry Phillips is walking away in disgust. And uh, Robert Wilson Jr. and Colin Hill are both on the floor. And uh, Chris Fires is trying to attend to Colin Hill. A few first aiders wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. Riders don't know much of what they're doing. Uh, that was a bit of bad luck there on the... Uh, the best of the staff and Dave Wright in second with Steve Boy in third. Look at Steve Boy trying to come around the outside of two of them now in that first turn. He's through into second. Paul Harris on very wide. Steve Boy's trying to hold the field. Steve Boy now. 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 Steve Boy Paul Harry now ready. Leading this Paul Harry that takes it. Steve Dorr, just a few yards of trip. A long way back to the 
going right. Then it's still off going. South of the river. Southern river. John Underwood. Then number 19. 45.2 miles per hour. Rate 21. That's changing now on the number of the number of the number of the I can't quite see who it is, but it looks like Mitchell Godden is missing. But it might well be Mitchell Godden that's reared on the gate. But Neil Scopes is in front of Stephen Dorr, so this will be interesting. Can Neil keep Stephen Dorr behind him for four laps? Looks like he's still in the third lap. A little bit wide there, Neil, but he's got away with it. One step by Pete Potts is in third place, followed by 331. But Neil Scopes closely tracked by Stephen Dorr. Can Neil Scopes keep Stephen Dorr behind him for four laps? One lap gone. Stephen Dorr right on Neil Scopes' back wheel that time. Stephen a little bit outside the markers there, but he's going right around the outside. And has he done it? Is Neil going to hold off? No, go on, Neil. Oh, alongside each other. Stephen Dorr right around the outside and then cut back. He's finally done it. He's a whole lap side for side to get by Neil Scopes. Neil wasn't going to let him go. Good brave riding by both of them, nobody giving way. A very fair overtake, nobody cutting each other up. Picks up the dust in front of Neil as he comes to the markers, but Neil managed to avoid them. The door is in the lead going in the first bend, but uh, who knows? Not very interesting to see him come to the back. But, ooh, got one for the five feet pop, so uh, trying to anticipate the start unless he's got a clutch problem. Starting's been excellent today, but uh, unusual for Keith. He's usually a very good uh, patient man on the start line. Oh, yeah. All alongside each other, there's Stephen Dorr just got by Neil Scopes going into the first bend. Looks like we're short of Mitchell Godden in this race. In fact, we are. Perhaps he damaged his uh, 350 when he tipped it up. Stephen Dorr's got a big rut on that top bend and pushed him wide to Neil Scopes in this track. So can Neil keep Stephen Dorr behind before that? 71 Arthur Livings and Keith Potts having a bit of a scrap for third place. But it's Neil Scopes keeping Stephen Dorr behind him at the moment. Can he do it for another two laps? Oh, it's a good tight line there coming out of that bend. Stephen Dorr's going to have to take on the outside. Keith Potts has held on the third place. Steve Dorr going around the outside down the back straight there, but not quite man and jet, but he's certainly within striking distance of uh, Neil Scopes now as they come in to take the car. Neil's gone wide, taking Steve with him that time. He knows exactly where Steve is at the moment. Steve's gone even wider there now, but is he going to cut back and come up the inside? That's what he's trying. Has he got away with it? No, not quite. Neil's holding the inside line. Are we going to see Stephen Dorr beat for the first time today? Oh! I don't know. I don't know. I don't think he's been beaten today, but he won't get much closer than that. I'm not going to say who I thought won, because I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> Certainly very, very close. We'll wait for the official lap scores on that, but super race between those two riders. Thank you. 
Back and putting it on the far side and saving the pull away from Sam Ramalenka.
for the backs. Well, what a tremendous effort from Jeremy Doncaster. And what a battle of Massimo Moro is, isn't he? To close up like that. Steve Schofield, these three, had such a tremendous struggle. And a great race. Congratulations to all three of them for what was really a superb effort. And indeed already started to open the gaps up. And as uh, Dave Steer comes back onto the circuit, Ivan Matthews sees him now and goes round the outside of him. The rest of the field also But Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones have looked in tremendous form this afternoon and they really have stamped their authority on this event. They won it back in 1993 and it's going to take a lot to catch them in this sort of form. Steve Smith is making the challenge. He's up in A great scrap going on for third place at the moment. Remember, it's the top three that we get up there on the roster at the end of the day. Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones still leading them from Steve Smith to Mick Stace in second. John Hiscock has now moved through in the third place. Now. Steve Smith coming to have a go at him as well for that third place. But as we look to the lead, it's still Ivan Matthews and Peter Jones. We know that the Alfred they ride is suited to this circuit. Just one more lap to complete and the 1995 burn-up becomes theirs. He's certainly slowed again, but Steve Smith has got a lot of work to do to try and close that gap. Well, Phil Pittman has won that battle for first place at the moment. Car class this afternoon, and then to be hit with mechanical problems, what a tragedy.